Let's bring in uh, our expert on jihadist movements, uh, Wasim Nazar, joining us by phone. Wasim, uh, thanks for being with us. Um, Thank you. This man, uh, Redouan Lakdim, claiming that he was part of uh, the Islamic State group, the Islamic State group claiming the attack. Um, do we believe uh, that this is actual fact, or do we believe this is opportunism? I don't believe it's opportunism, uh, since he said himself that he is acting on behalf of the Islamic State, and then the Islamic State uh, claimed the, the responsibility for, for, his, uh, for his action. That's on one hand. On the other hand, he also claimed, and this is the France 24 information that I got uh, uh, hours ago, that he wanted, uh, he asked for the release of Salah Abdeslam, so the last remaining uh, member of the commando who made uh, the, the Paris attacks. So uh, all this links him. Uh, to the uh, to the Islamic State. But besides that, we have to see if there's an organizational link, or if he if he just acting on behalf of. But anyways, in both cases, uh, he's acting for the organization, and the organization claimed the attack. So it should be taken seriously. And uh, I don't think that it could be called uh, opportunism since the two sides. Uh, claimed this action as I as I uh, as I just uh, just said. Indeed, Watson, you're very very clear on that. Very clear. Gerard Colomb, the Interior Minister, uh, stating this man acted as a lone wolf. However, by the nature of what's happened, I mean three separate incidents. There's been a carjacking, uh, one killed, two killed at the supermarket. An element of planning, clearly, and guns have been obtained. Now, in terms of acting as a lone wolf, that's a lot to organise by yourself. Do you think? This man perhaps had accomplices, um, friends, people who were helping him. It's too soon uh, to say what kind of uh, accomplices he had, but what I can tell you, since I'm following these issues since years, that um, I don't believe in the lone wolf theory. In all the cases, uh, but if you look at the number of lone wolves that we have, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a big pack uh, today. And if you, if you look on each case, you can see that there are accomplices, ramifications, links, virtual or real, with one organization or or another. So it's too soon in this case to establish what are uh, the real links. Uh, but uh, there is no case in jihadi terror act actions where uh, it was really a lone wolf action. The only known lone, really lone wolf action, it was Brivik and it wasn't uh, a jihad at the time. So, uh, and I guess that today all scholars and all each and every person who's working on these issues can tell you that we always see links and ramification uh, and nobody acts like it's, it's like going to the action can be made alone, but the, the preparation, uh, the uh, the uh, how how did he get the gun? How did he did he had links with people uh, in Syria, in Iraq, or in Libya, or in Tunisia? I remember one of the latest attacks in Great Britain. The links were to Libya, and not, not at all towards Syria and uh, and Iraq. So it's the beginning of the investigation. But one more time, I don't think that uh, this lone wolf theory is quite accurate regarding jihadi terrorist action. Indeed. Anders Breivik, the man you referred to in 2011, killed, of course, around about 70 people, mostly children, in Norway. He, mm -hmm. perhaps the only lone wolf, uh, as you were talking exactly. about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Wasim, can you just tell us a little bit more about what the motivation might be? You study these things. You, you monitor what's going on. What is the motivation? What could have led this man to act? Actually, do those people are, are convinced people that uh, they should wage jihad in Western countries as they think and they assume that Western countries are uh, waging war in, in, uh, in Muslim countries. So that's the, that's the, uh, that those are the basics of, uh, of any jihadi uh, symp sympathizer. And today we see that uh, the threat is coming from inside uh, Western countries rather from the outside, because all the actions or most of the actions that, were, that happened or occurred in any Western countries were made by, by nationals or by people who were living in this country since, since a while. So uh, the commando, even the commando that was sent from Syria to hit, to attack in Paris, it was mostly uh, constituted by French and Belgian nationals. So they weren't uh, foreigners at all, even though they got trained in Syria. And from up from that point, all the attacks that occurred here were made by people that are nationals of the countries that, uh, that are attacked. So today, jihad is, is attractive 
for some people as other uh, uh, violent uh, ideologies were too attractive to other kinds of populations, for example, in the 20th century. And today, jihadi groups like Al-Qaeda, like the Islamic State, they succeeded in a way to create their own myth and to recruit even in, uh, in Western streets. So I guess that this phenomena, we are just witnessing the beginning of this phenomena and the end of the territorial control uh, in Syria and Iraq for the Islamic State wouldn't find the end of the ideology, knowing that they are very prosper in countries like Afghanistan, still in Libya, Yemen, and especially also in Egypt uh, and Sinai. So it's the beginning of a phenomena that I think, in my humble opinion, will be the phenomena of the century as uh, violent uh, communist movements were the phenomena of the last century.